Welcome to Indigenous Media Network News Bulletin. Today, the 11th of October 2021. First the headlines. An expert, a political activist and a diplomat expressed discontent against political exclusion and marginalization in Ethiopia. Heavy bombardment against Tigray rebels intensifying in Amhara region. South Sudan President, Salva Kerr in Cairo over the weekend. EU grants $41 million to support rural communities in South Sudan. News in details. Ethiopia. A political activist, a diplomat and an expert from Gambela and Benishangulgumu's regions on Saturday, expressed their discontent against Abiy Ahmed appointment of 22 cabinet that excluded the two Nilotic regional states. The exclusion of the indigenous peoples from these areas confirms successive Ethiopian regimes' political exclusion and marginalization since the indigenous peoples' territories were incorporated into Ethiopian empire. In an exclusive interview with Indigenous Media Network, three indigenous peoples' leaders were responding to the appointment of 22 ministerial portfolios by Abiy Ahmed, Ethiopian Prime Minister and Nobel Peace Prize laureate. The appoint that gave more than 75% to two largest ethnic groups, Amhara and Oromo, they said, not only contradicts the constitutional provisions, but also a continuation of past repressive and exclusive policies in a country of more than 80 ethnic communities. Such exclusion of the two Nilotic regions, despite the Prime Minister claims that regional consideration was part of the criterion, sent a shockwave to the indigenous peoples who not only expected Abiy Ahmed's reform to have brought inclusive government, but also yarned for an end to a century-long marginalization. In the past, the two indigenous peoples' territories, in addition to Lower Omo Valley, were targeted by ill-conceived large-scale commercial agricultural investment or land grabs and villagization program with adverse effect on their livelihoods and the environment. While the Gambela region co-hosts with its neighbor, the Southern Nations, Nationalities and Peoples region, the only remaining Ethiopia's thick forest, the Benishangulgumu's region is home for Ethiopia's Renaissance Dam, a source of international dispute between the two riparian states over the share of the Nile water. On another development, heavy airstrikes and ground offensive against Tigray rebels intensified in Ethiopia's controversial law enforcement operations since last November 2020. The conflict between Abiy Ahmed's forces and Amhara militias in addition to Eritrean forces has had twists and turns. In June the Ethiopian regime declared unilateral ceasefire, which it's claimed to benefit farmers in a war-torn Tigray region. But this attempt failed to end hostilities. Instead, the rebel had controlled Makili, the capital city of Ethiopia's Tigray regional state but made Abiy Ahmed forces and Amhara militias to retreat into Amhara and Afar, now the center of deadly conflict, which the authorities are accusing the TPLF as occupying the enemy territories. The Amhara militias and allies embroiled in contested territorial claims continue to control of western Tigray along Sudan border. Last week large military buildup was reported in Amhara region, confirming appetite for heavy bombardment now underway. Diplomatic sources and the rebel spokesperson, Gitachu Rida, was quoted to have said. There is a massive build-up of forces on all fronts. We are not sure which front they are seriously launching an offensive. Since the withdrawal and unilateral declaration of ceasefire, both the Ethiopian army and the Amhara regional state have been recruiting and training military personnel for offensive. Abiy Ahmed, who was reappointed as the country prime minister following June controversial election, has been under intense diplomatic pressure on human rights atrocities in Tigray. South Sudan South Sudan President, Salva Kerr, was in Egypt over the weekend to discuss bilateral issues with his counterpart, Egyptian President, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. On top of his agenda was the dispute over the Nile water share. A frequent visitor since Abdul Fattah el-Sisi came to power in 2014, Salva Kerr reported to have deliberated on bilateral cooperation and on development and Ethiopia's Renaissance Dam, according to MENA News. The bilateral discussion also included scholarships for South Sudanese students to build the new nation-state. South Sudan, a country that broke out from Khartoum in 2011 has been drawn into water dispute between the two most populous continental African nation-states. The Ethiopian Renaissance Dam located in the Benishangulgumu's region, an indigenous people's territory, has been an international diplomatic agenda. 
In a statement issued by the country's Foreign and International Cooperation Ministry, the ministry acknowledged Egyptian people and government for their long-standing support in education they provided to South Sudanese even during the liberation struggle. Today, Egyptian-trained lawyers, doctors and engineers constitute the backbone of South Sudan's civil service. These historical relations are the context in which we South Sudanese consider Egypt as a special ally in the region, the statement read. On another development, the European Union Trust Fund has allocated more than $41 million to two humanitarian organizations, the United Nations Office for Projects and Services, UNOPS, and the World Food Programme, WFP, operating in the country to support the rural communities. According to the European Union, part of the fund will be utilized to connect rural communities through feeder roads in northern and western Bar El Ghazal states and Greater Upper Nile. However, South Sudan remains among corrupt countries in the world. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel for more news and updates. Join us again in our next news bulletin.